Today is the return of the Full Story series. This is where we take some of our older videos right here at Comic Story and that we completed a long time ago, but we take the whole playlist and we turn it into one giant epic audio drama for you. We redid World War Hulk recently, so today we're going to give you Planet Hulk and World War Hulk in one giant Hulk Buster video. I hope you enjoy. As the Hulk drifts along in a predetermined course, he watches a video from Reed Richards and the other members of the Illuminati telling him they are sorry. There have been times that his anger was used to save the world, but just as many times, it put the world right back into danger. That is why they are sending him to a lush planet full of vegetation and game. No intelligent life forms to bother, making this place truly a place that he can be left alone and find peace. Except, the Hulk rages within the ship, and he rips it apart, causing it to go off course, landing him on the planet of Sakaar, which is full of intelligent life forms, like the hive insectoids who are trying to kill the Hulk now. As a group of Sakaar watch the Hulk fight off the hive, he begins to feel a prick on the back of his neck, and as the Sakaar talk, their words begin to make sense. The one in charge says that based on your comically moronic expression, it would appear that the talk bots have finally reached your brain. He then pulls out a scroll and he begins to read what he, the governor of the Wakar province, and by the orders of the Lord Empire, declare! And that is that this green thing is now Imperial property. They will be taking control of him as well as seizing his ship for further examination. His first order to serve his new emperor is to kneel. And the Hulk laughs. laughs. You want ship? It's yours. And then he throws it! And then he leaves shouting, Hulk does not kneel! The governor fires a gun that stuns and brings the Hulk straight to the ground and tells him, That is close enough. A little while later, the Hulk begins to open up his eyes and he finds himself bound and chained to what would be a marketplace. The man in front shouts that they will start the auction at 15 silver squares and the Hulk begins shouting and pulling at the chains. And the seller says that their sleeping beauty has awoken. Fear not, those are Shadow Forge chains. One man in the group says that he will pay 60 for the entire lot, including the green one. And the seller yells, SOLD! After being transported into container, the Hulk smashes through it, shouting, STUPID PLANET! STUPID PORTAL! WHEN I GET MY HANDS ON! And as he steps out, he sees that he is in a coliseum along with the other slaves. Suddenly over the mic, the announcer shouts, YOU ARE ABOUT TO BEAR WITNESS TO THE FEEDING HABIT OF THE PLANET'S MOST DANGEROUS CREATURE, THE CORKER! The ground slowly begins to rumble, and then several tentacles thrash out of the ground, grabbing the hive and tossing it into their mouth. Another hive shouts that now is the time for dodging, letting, hiding, and the Hulk grabs a tentacle and he says, it's a time for smashing. The corker pulls back, throwing the Hulk into its mouth and it swallows. Up in the stand, the Red King watches, saying, this is getting rather boring, and then the guts are splattered across his face. The Hulk stands up in the corker's body, yelling, and then after grabbing a giant broken battle axe, he swings it, cutting off the heads of the remaining corkers. The Black Hive says, thanks for the help, and the Hulk grabs him, asking if he's trying to trick him. Hey, 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 no more fighting. The cheers from the crowd are for them. The Red King will now pardon us. The Hulk asks, who? And the Hive points to the seat with the Red King watching. Finally. And he jumps at him, telling him, Hulk knows who to smash! But before the Hulk can reach him, his warbound shadow shoots him back to the ground. And the Red King says, Wait, I will take care of him myself. The Hulk gets up and the Red King jumps down, telling Hulk, You could have been pardoned. You could have been made into a citizen. But instead, you have tried to kill me. The sword is thrown before the Hulk, and the Red King tells him, You will either now die at my feet or on your knees. The Hulk grabs the sword and he swings, but the Red King dodges and he swings, forcing the Hulk to block. The shield is then struck and it shatters, and the Red King jumps in, slashing at the Hulk's face. The other Hive run up, telling the King to wait! Wait! We want to be pardoned! And in a blue flash, the King kills them all, and the Black Hive shouts, KILL HER! The Hulk runs in, grabbing the Hive before the King can kill him, and the King taunts him. So the Hulk jumps back. With one massive swing, he cuts the King's face, and the Shadow jumps into the arena before he can swing again. The Shadow clashes with the Hulk, telling him, you can't defeat me. This isn't your world. And the Hulk smiles, telling them, not yet. But before the two of them can go at each other, there is another flash of light hitting the Hulk and he falls to the ground. The Red King says, I can't have the shadow of staging me. And then he turns to the crowd, telling them, behold, the Lord Emperor grants this slave his life. The King then whispers to the governor to go ahead and take him to the mall. A short while later, the slave container is placed onto the volcanic quarry and the hive shouts, no, no, no. The Hulk pushes him aside to look out, and he asks, 
What are you crying about? This is going to be fun. As the container is opened, everyone is thrown to the bottom of the maw where the volcanic creature begins to spew lava all over them. The Hulk laughs, <laughs> as one of the slave robots jumps out of the way from the lava, and the robot tells him, you won't be laughing when it's incinerating you. The Hulk grabs the rock that he's standing on, and he throws it at the creature, telling him, you're right. I want to live long enough to incinerate him. The creature explodes and the lava sprays all over the Hulk. And the robot says, I warned you, dummy, but thanks for saving my can. The lava begins to burn away at his head and the Hulk tells him, I didn't do it for you. I just felt like fighting. Someone calls out that it seems that he hasn't lost his spirit yet, but it won't do much if he stays so stupid. Now kneel. The Hulk says that he's tired of hearing that and the Sakaar holds out a staff telling him, kneel. The staff begins to shoot out energy to the device implanted in the Hulk's chest. And the robot tells him to just give up. That's an obedience disc. Fight against it as hard as you want and it will fry your brain if there is one. The Hulk forcibly kneels, and the Sakaar says that he has Privus Vand. Like him, he was a slave. But after winning four seasons in the Imperial Arena, he was granted freedom. Where they are right now is the Maw, the Empire's most lethal gladiatorial training school, and the Maw must be fed. Primus then says that no one on the planet believes that they deserve to live, so who among them can prove them wrong? There are 22 of them, only 7 will leave. Among the slaves, Asakar shouts that he is a citizen of the Empire. He demands a trial so that he knows what he did. Primus holds out his staff, burning the man to ash, and he tells him, It's time to fight or die. As everyone runs to the center to grab a weapon, an unhived insectoid says that there is something strange. The pink man said 22, but he's only counting 16. The Hulk tells him, shut up, and everyone begins charging at each other. The rock creature grabs the Hulk, telling him to hold. If they work together, they... But as the Hulk struggles against him, the rock creature throws him to the ground, telling him, fine! Suddenly, one of the slaves has two claws stabbed into his back, and everyone sees several brood flying in the air. One of them says that they are the brood from the brood world, and they are lunch. Hulk holds both of his fists together, cracking the brood across the head, telling them, Just go have a sandwich then. The unhived shouts, You just saved Meek! You're a good friend to Meek. And as the Hulk continues beating up everything, he tells them, We are not friends. I am no one's friend. Meek says that he's just saying that, but as the rock creature grapples with the Hulk again, he says, No, he means it, which is why he'll die. But before the two of them can attack each other, Primus shouts for everyone to stop. Everyone looks around at each other, and Primus tells them that those seven have survived the cut. So, from now on, they are a team. So sleep well, tomorrow gets worse. A short while later, the seven sit in their cell, and the rock creature introduces himself as Korg, and then he points, saying, I need names and skills from everyone here. Meek says, well, I'm Meek, and I am unhived. As for skills, I can fight with four arms? The brood says that she is brood from the brood world, which is no more. No queen, no sisters, no name. You have seen what I can do. Korg then turns to Shadow and asks what about him. But across the room, the other Sakaar says that he is an unbound Shadow. His days are just prayer and silence, and when it comes to it, he will fight. As for him, he is Captain Levine Ski, formerly of the Imperial Guard, and his employer, Ronin Kafif, is the man that the trainer has killed. The female says that Ronin was her father, and her name is Alo, and she doesn't know much about fighting, but she will learn. Korg says that's good. And the Hulk doesn't know. It's stupid. We all know what happens on this planet. What happens when it's time to kill each other? Korg stops for a moment and then he says that they both know what will happen. Until then, they are friends. Hulk puts his head back down and he says, Just wake me when it's time to fight. The next morning, the team is thrown back into the maw before the lava lake. And Korg says that their enemies are in there. Something begins to rise up and Korg says, No. Margus, I thought you were dead. Margus charges out of the lava, punching Korg, and everyone else begins to fight, but as the rock creatures fight back, Korg says, I can't fight, not against my brothers. So the Hulk grabs Korg, and then he spins, slamming him into the rock creature, causing him to break. Hulk tells him, Hulk will smash them for you. And Korg tries to fight against it. He prays for forgiveness for what he's about to do. Later, after defeating the rock creatures, the team is taken back to their site, and along the ride, Meek asks Hulk if there are others like him. He tells him, no, there are just puny humans like a banner, and we will never see his face. He's even weaker than Meek. Meek laughs, telling him, I'd love to see someone weaker than Meek. The brood says, you might not. I've eaten a few of his people. Individually, they are defenseless, but with their machines and heroes, they overcome considerable challenges. The Hulk looks back, telling them, their machines and heroes won't save them. Meek asks, from what? And the Hulk doesn't answer. 
Above the group, Elo says that there's a pleasure cruiser that has come to see their blood. An announcer calls out that last week, the fierce green gladiator earned his first wound from the Emperor himself. But after the group's stint in the mall, the planet will now see how they do against the Shaleen Plane's most lethal wild bots. Hulk then feels Korg grab him, and before the Hulk can ask what he's doing, Korg launches the Hulk at the wild bots, telling him, I'm just returning the favor, and the Hulk laughs. Ha 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 ha! Later aboard the cruiser, the team is treated to a feast for their victory over the wild bots and for Levine well other pleasantries among the shadows Hulk sees the Red King's warbound shadow watching them as the feast goes on there's a sudden explosion from the wall and a group of Sakaar begin to shout that they are the Sakaar insurgency they fight for the outcast slaves and the discarded they fight for him the green scar so now will a green scar fight for them the Imperial Guards begin to fill the room, and the Rebel Leader shouts to come with them. They will tear the Emperor from his throne. Alo yells that this is it. They can finally bring the fight to the Red King! And the Hulk just looks at them and tells them, forget it. Suddenly the walls break down as the Imperial's death heads, the Emperor's deadliest group of assassins, storm the room. The death's heads all focus on the Rebel members, and Elo shouts that they have to help them! Hulk tells her that she can do what she wants, but I'm gonna finish my dinner. Elo says that the Rebels are the only ones trying to fix this world. They need them! And Hulk tells her, Puny pinkies, like the puny humans who first called me a monster. Then they come crying for help. Then they come calling me a monster again. One of the death's heads grabs Elo, and the Hulk tells him, She's with my group. Elo turns back saying, No, she isn't and then she's taken away. Later, Cork tells Levine that there's nothing that he could have done to save her. She chose her path. Levine scoffs saying, yeah, she's the only one who chose correct. But before they can go, Primus tells the group that their fight against the wild bots have made the premier view box feed. The Imperial League has taken notice of them, so go get some sleep. Tomorrow, they hit the big time. The group is led to their rooms, and Primus quietly talks to the Hulk, saying that it's easy to get caught up in the moment, but he has his eye on the big picture. He could be willing to make it all the way, unlike the others with him, so don't blow that chance. The Hulk doesn't answer him as he pushes the curtains to his room, and the King's shadow stands there. She lunges with a blade, and the Hulk catches it laughing, and then he asks if she's going to try that every time that we meet. The shadow smiles, saying that she needs to know her enemies, and he's getting faster, but she can still cut off his head. Hulk tells her that he would rip her in half before his head hit the ground, and the shadow backs off saying, maybe next time. Currently, you and your group are a problem for the Emperor as long as you stay in the public eye, so I'm here to buy you. I can take you to the steps, a place of peace, and you will never have to fight again. The Hulk says he's heard that before, no thanks. And the shadow says to think about it again, you will always be a monster in their eyes. The Hulk pushes open the curtain to two Sakaar women and he smiles, yeah, but at least those guys know what a monster likes. The following morning, the team is gathering in the arena for their next fight. Korg tells everyone that this is it. Three rounds and they will finally be free. With so many people watching, the Emperor would hesitate before breaking his words. Just then, the sound of a giant engine can be heard, and the announcer calls out that the ship above them is the Imperial Dreadnought. But what is it doing here? Then one of the bombs aims down and it releases. Hulk tells Korg to shield the others, and Korg shouts, Even you can't stop a bomb! The Hulk jumps up, stating, Sure I can! I'm the Hulk! The bomb detonates covering the arena in a fiery blast, but as the smoke clears, Korg asks if everyone's all right. They all hear Levine groan, and then they see that one of his arms was lost in the blast. Through the dust, the death's heads all begin to walk towards them, telling them, enemy, targeted. The priest runs over to Levine, telling him to be still. He will want prayer, but Levine tells him, no, I want my sword. Once the group gains their balance, Korg leads the charge to Death's Heads, but something behind them is pulling them back one at a time. The Death's Heads start reporting, enemy down, and the Hulk rips through the group telling them, no, enemy mad. He grabs one of the Death's Heads and he begins to beat the others with the first guy's body. More appear, stabbing into the Hulk with spears, and the Hulk yells, shaking the whole Coliseum. A short while later, in their cell, the priest prays for Levine, and Meek says that we're going to die tomorrow, aren't we? Korg says, this is our time, and the brood tells Meek, do not listen, I have seen worse and live to tell the tale. Everyone begins telling their war stories, each trying to show up the last, but as everyone goes on, the priest tells everyone that that is enough. He places his hand over Levine's body, telling everyone, let you be warbound. In life and death, the oath cannot be broken. This man was Levine Ski, the protector of Elo, and a hero of their second trail. Those who honor him shall speak their names and bind with each other forever. I am Hirom the Shamed, Shadow Warrior and Saka Priest. Meek places his hand over Hirom's, saying, I am Meek the Unhived. And the Brood places her, stating, I am no name, Warrior Prime of Brood Worlds. Korg places his hand, stating, I am Korg of Krona, son of Okorg and Ahana. And then finally, the Hulk places his hand there. And Meek says, we are now warbound. 
Meanwhile, elsewhere, the King Shadow speaks with a slave trader, and he tells her that he has brought her what he promised. The King Shadow looks into the container, seeing a silver man, and the trader says that the green scar may have started a story, but the silver savage will end it. The sun rises the next day and the sounds of the war drums ring throughout the city, signaling that today is to be a public holiday for everyone to gather. Everyone in the city begins to head to the Colosseum, and as the slaves clean up the arena, one of the slaves notices something. Another asks what he's looking at, and the first slave says that it is a vine, and it grew from the blood of the green scar. Once the arena is cleaned, the announcer calls out that this is the moment that everyone's been waiting for. The final challenge of our gladiators, so please welcome the green scar and his men! The crowds all cheer and shout, and the announcer says, Do not forget your commemorative banners, posters, and shirts. And Meek says, I want a shirt. The Hulk stands in the center of the arena, and the doors to his opponent open up, and his eyes go wide. Hulk asks, Is that really the Silver Surfer? And Hiram asks if he knows him. Hulk says, Yeah, he's the Silver Surfer. He's a... And the Silver Surfer finishes, Friend. As the obedience disc buzzes, the Silver Surfer charges through the group, giving the Hulk a thundering crack with his mace. Hulk jumps up struggling, telling the Silver Surfer, I thought you were different. And the Silver Surfer says, please forgive me. And then he knocks the Hulk back again. Meek asks, I thought the humans were weak. And the Brood says, I told you that he was exaggerating. Everyone jumps in attacking, and the Silver Surfer effortlessly pushes everyone back, and then uses his board to send Korg flying. Harome helps Hulk up, saying, another pass at you and we will die. There's only one spot. And the Hulk says, go high, I've got it. Harome leaps in and the Silver Surfer holds his board up to shield himself, but instead, Harome vaults off of the board towards the controllers. Hulk runs in, slamming into the Obedience disc, and the Silver Surfer falls to his knees. He looks back up, telling him, you broke the disc, I'm free. Think, but before he can finish, the Hulk begins to beat and punch down on the Silver Surfer. The crowds cheer, but the Hulk doesn't stop, and he continues beating on him. Korg stops him, telling him, it's over, we've won. We've won three rounds in the Great Arena, so it is time for them to give us our freedom. The Colosseum doors open back up, and the King Shadow steps out, stating, You did survive three rounds, but the Green Scar slashed the face of the Emperor. So you have one last test of loyalty. Death's Head pushes out a group of robe cigar and pulls their hoods down. The Shadow goes on saying, Ello, their friend, and a traitor. Kill her, and you are free. The Hulk tells them, this is a bad joke. And Primus shocks the obedience disc, telling him, too bad, you're gonna do it anyway. Hulk starts to pull his fist back over Ello, and she tells him, that is enough. Even you can't withstand the obedience disc. Just tell me one thing, Levine, where? Harome tells her that he died. Died fighting by their side till the very end. They are his warbound. With that, they invoke the warbound provisions of the Shadow Pact. Their brothers served this woman, and they will not fight this woman. Forcing their hand, they will break the treaty between the Shadow and the Empire. The King Shadow says that she knows who he is. He is Harome the Shamed. He gave up his right to invoke the Shadow Pact when he broke his first bond. Harome says that bond was never broken. She and him never took it. He slams his spear into the ground, saying that even if you speak of treason, I will not fight this girl. Primus says, that's fine. If you won't, I will make you. And he begins shocking everyone's obedience discs. The group resists, and then there's a sudden boom out of everyone's discs. And then everyone else is wearing one. The Silver Surfer says, no more slaves, only free people now. Meek says, what now? And the Hulk asks him, what do you think? We tear this mother down. Korg and the Hulk run through the walls of the Colosseum, creating a path for the slaves to run free. As Harome leads the slaves into the woods, Silver Surfer tells the Hulk that the disc prevented him from using his power cosmic. But he is still weak, something with this planet or the portal leading here. He must now return to the stars. Will he come as well? The Hulk says, Back when we first met, I wanted to be taken away to another planet. But now, this is it. I'm finally here. The Silver Surfer says that neither of them should be staying. They won't leave him alone. They will never stop. And the Hulk shakes his head, telling him, So long, Surfer. And the Silver Surfer says, So be it. Be well. He flies into the skies, and the Hulk turns back to everyone else. And he begins to lead the slaves to a place where they can finally be free. As the night falls over the refugee camp, one of the men asks what they're supposed to do now that they're free. And Meek tells him, not to worry, Hulk will take care of things. The man says they all need to open up their eyes. Hulk isn't there to help, he's a monster! Just waiting for a chance to eat them. Meek jumps on the man shouting, liar! And next to them, the Hulk watches and laughs. <laughs> Meek turns back shouting to the Hulk, telling him, he's wrong! And the Hulk says, the more the puny pinky talks, the hungrier I get. For those of you guys who don't know, he has been implanted with a device which allows him to be intelligent and talk. The man gets up and starts to run, and the nameless brood says, she can go get him. But Hulk tells her no. 
Let him go. After getting away from the camp, the man pulls out a communicator and he radios back that the camp is completely vulnerable. Just follow his trace and they can find the group of refugees. Kira tells him that she received his message. Hold position! And the governor says that it's time to finish this. Begin the bombardment. The man tries to tell him to wait and then he begins running back. Hulk stops him. Why are you running? There are only monsters here. Seconds later, a bomb is dropped on the camp, covering everything in fire. The next morning, Kira and her guard examine the bomb site, and one of the guards says that they only found one body, their own spies. Kira radios to the governor that it was just a decoy, and the governor says that that's fine, they'll track them down. He's busy at the moment. One of the guards asks what they should do next then, and then suddenly a shot rings out through the valley, and Kira rushes over to see the governor, killing some of the locals. She shouts at him, asking, what are you doing? And the governor says, I'm just cleaning some things up, as well as adding bait to our trap. Up on the cliff, Elio watches and draws her blade, stating, that this is her only chance. They need to end this now. Hulk pulls out his blade and Harum stops him, telling him, if your enemy invites you in, and then he points towards the other cliff. As the group looks, their reflections begin to shine back, and Harum says that there are a dozen war chariots and two platoons of heavy infantrymen. They need to find a place to lay low and train to take them on. Meek tells everyone that he knows just where to go then. Later, over at the local village farm, Imperial guards tell the locals that the Green Scar has escaped and he was last seen heading this direction. So if they spot him, contact them immediately. One of the locals asks, Really? The same way you were so helpful when the wild bots attacked? The guard tells him that this is a military issue. Wild bots are a local issue. But before he can finish, a wild bot leaps out of the waters, biting into him. As the wild bots begin to attack, Headman Char steps out asking, What is going on? And then he sees the attack. He tells his men that the Empire has abandoned them. They will fight for their home. Stand firm. One of the wild bots suddenly starts to move, and before anyone can ask what's going on, the Hulk tears through and ripping it apart. A short while later, as the villagers are feeding Hulk and his group, one of the bystanders asks if it's really a good idea to let the Green Scar stay. Char tells them that the Red King doesn't care about them. Without the Empire helping take out the wild bots, these monsters are their only hope. As everyone sits around, Meek gets up and sneaks out to the outskirts of the village. That's where he finds a pile of debris, and he kneels down at the skeletal remains of someone like him. The brood appears behind him, stating that she can smell it. The chem's still in the air, even after all of these years. She can smell the hive. His hive. A few moments later, Meek closes his eyes, and everyone back at the village begins to see something. And that's when the images start to take form of Meek growing up. His father was the leader of their hive, and Char and the rest of the Imperial Guard killed his father and took their land. Everyone on the hive was slaughtered, leaving him to be the only survivor. Back at the village, the brood says that Meek has chem bonded with them and shared his life. Meek holds up the skull that he found, telling them, I'm calling on you for justice. Meek then turns and calls out to Char, telling him, You killed my father in my hive. Now you will be paying. Char says that he did in fact wipe out his hive on the orders of the Emperor. However, if they were to fight, many would die. So he shall invoke Imperial Law to allow the both of them to have a trial by arms. The next morning, Meek is to face off against Char. And as soon as the battle begins, Char disarms Meek, pinning him to the ground, telling him to yield. Meek shouts that he'll never yield! Meek then grabs his spear, and he cuts off his own arm, freeing himself. And he sweeps at Char, grabbing a blade to push it into his neck. But before he could thrust it down, he throws the spear and he begins to cry. Except... Someone cries back. The Hulk grabs the earth where the cries are coming from and a group of Hive crawl out calling, Brother Meek! Later that night, Kira and her men pass by the now destroyed village that Char was in charge of. The governor asks where do the monsters go and as Char looks at himself on the reflection of the governor's armor, he says that all he sees is a monster. Back at the Imperial City, a group of slaves rebel in the name of the Green Scar and they start attacking the guards stationed there. Fire begins to rain down from the sky, burning the rebels, and the Red King floats above them, telling them, You would have had it better off if you had just prayed to your king. As the Red King torches the remaining rebels, the Red King's assistant radios over to Kira that she needs to return. The Emperor needs her! Meanwhile, up ahead at Char's destroyed village, Meek leads the group of younglings, and Harom says that he does know that they need more provisions to feed them, right? Hulk looks at the group and he tells them, I know just the place. A short while later over at the mall, Primus tells a group of slaves that this is the Empire's most lethal gladiatorial training school, and the maw must be fed. But then a voice tells him, or not. And the Hulk jumps in, breaking the tooth off of one of the Maw Beasts. Primus shouts for the slaves to kill him, and he holds up his obedience staff. But then he's kicked by Elia, who takes the staff. She holds it up, telling the slaves to kill Primus. And Hulk grabs it from her, crushing it, saying, No, they are all free now. She shouts, Why did you do that? Primus killed my father, he deserves to die. And the Hulk tells her, If it's so, then kill him yourself. Elio looks at Primus, and then turns to walk away. 
Primus says, Thanks. I always knew that you were the smart one. And the Hulk turns to him and tells him, Shut up or I'll do the job. One of the slaves shouts for the Hulk to watch out, and the mob beast lunges at him. He pulls off the obedience disc, and he pats his nose, telling him, Free. Now with more refugees and even the Empire's provisions, the Hulk leads the group toward the steps so that they can finally be free, and Harom says that this is no man's land. Protected by the Shadow Treaty, the Empire will not follow them there. However, since the Spike War, it's been a wasteland. Nothing grows there, only monsters live there. The Hulk looks out at the wasteland and he says, Sounds like home. As the group continues on, Neek says, We have to go back! I can hear the voices in the air calling to us! Back over at Char's village, the group spots Char and the governor killing a group of locals. Elio says that that's what they get for letting those people live. And Meek tells Hulk, it's time to smash! We are warbound! Seconds later, the Hulk leads the charge down on the Imperial Guards! And as they do, an explosion begins to go off from behind. A large boulder is thrown into the group, and Hulk and Krog stop it from crushing everyone. As everyone fights, Meek sees Char and he tells him, I'm coming for you! Char says, you couldn't finish me before, what makes you think? But before Char can even finish his words, Meek grabs a spear, stabbing into him, and he picks up his body. Hulk and Krog throw the boulder onto the Death's heads, and Krog runs over to Meek, telling him, it's over. Meek pulls out the spear and dagger, and he asks, over? Meek is just getting started. Meek shouts as he leads a group towards the guards, but before killing them, Hulk says, stupid bug. He claps his hands, knocking everyone to the ground, and Meek jumps at the Hulk with his spear, asking, why? As the spear hangs from the Hulk's chest, Krog tells him, you already know why. And Meek tells him, all I know is what you taught me. Back at the Imperial City, Kira fights off a group of rebels as she sees the Red King torching a group of townspeople. Kira jumps in his way, telling him to let her, and then she slams her hand down, knocking everyone to the ground. She gets back up, telling him, there, they won't bother you now, but the Red King tells her, they will bother me. They're still alive. But before he can go back to killing, the King's assistant shouts, the governor, he returns. The Red King asks, where is his army? The governor says that it's like the old rhyme says. He isn't the green scar. He's the Sakaar son. Instantly, the governor is burned where he stands, and the Red King shouts that he is the Sakaar son. He is the hero protector, the deliverer of people, the true son of Sakaar. Meanwhile, back with the Hulk and his group, the night begins to fall over the snowy steppes. As everyone regroups, Meek heads over to the younglings, and the brood tells him that they've been calling for him. They've been calling for him to change. The next morning, the refugees say that they've received a transmission from the Crown City. Hundreds of slaves are riding in the streets, and the time for them to return is now. The Hulk tells them, So go. All I ever wanted was for people to leave me alone. If you all have a brain, you'll shut the hell up and leave me before I kill this whole stupid planet. Meek's voice chimes in, telling him, No, you're not going anywhere. The Hulk looks up to see Meek changed in his hive, telling him that Meek is no longer Brother Meek. He is King Meek! Meek holds up a spear, telling the Hulk that they are warbound. And the Hulk smacks it away, telling him, Get your hands off me! All of the Hive Brothers begin to charge in and jump on the Hulk, and Meek leaps through the crowd, stabbing into the Hulk's chest. The Hulk knocks Meek off, and he shouts, You just don't listen! I said I was done! He raises both of his fists over Meek's body, and as he swings down, Korg jumps in the way, taking the hit. Korg looks up, stating that Meek wants to hunt the Red King. But you, you need to stop. Meek helps Korg get back up, asking, How can I stop? This is what I was made for! So with that, Korg and Harom lead a group of refugees into the steppes, while Hulk follows Meek as he takes his army towards the Empire. As the army moves, the refugees spot Kira and her army coming towards them, and the archers open fire, but the arrows just bounce off and break on Kira's skin. The captain tells the archers to reload, but the Hulk tells him to wait. I'll handle this. As him and Kira walk into the field, the Hulk asks what does she want, and she says that he should have listened to her before. Now the king wants his head, and the Hulk says, That's funny. I was just coming for his. Kira then says that he'll kill millions to get to him, and the Hulk says that he'll kill them anyway. Kira holds out her spear and says, maybe, but if she can kill him first, there might be a chance. As the end of the spear is thrust into the Hulk's shoulder, he says, that's cute, and he pulls it out. He then takes out his sword, and with such a force, he slams it down on Kira's spear, shattering both weapons. The two run at each other as the Hulk slams down, and Kira punches forward. The force from the two blows shake the ground, and the dust settles, and the Hulk gets up telling her, so that's the old power. Kira starts to get up, telling him that he should be dead. And the Hulk tells her, you look dead. As the two start to make their way towards each other, one of the guards then looks at the blood left from the Hulk, and he says, it's really him. The green scar is the Sakarsan. The Red King in response says, fine, so do it now. 
Suddenly, one of the Imperial Dreadnoughts begins to fall out of the sky and it crashes onto the Imperial Army. The Hulk asks, Was that a bomb? And Kira tells him, No, it's not a bomb. It's the spikes. Small flesh creatures begin jumping out of the Dreadnought and latching onto anything that moves. And Kira goes on, stating that they will destroy the world. The Hulk picks up a spear, asking, Didn't you hear? That's my job! As the infected shuffle towards them, the Hulk scoffs that they really don't look so tough. And she better not go anywhere because once he's done with them, he's going for her. Kira takes the tip of her spear and slams it into the Hulk's foot, telling him that he won't get a chance. He shouts, fine! And then he grabs Kira and he throws her over at the group of infected. Once she's in the clear, the Hulk turns back and begins smashing through the infected. And as he punches a hole through one, it spits out a tentacle into his neck. Meek shouts for the Hulk to come on. And the Hulk turns back with the spike slowly consuming him and he shouts, run! Meek doesn't leave and he pulls and rips the spike out of his own chest and then he stabs it into the ground. The Hulk laughs, calling Meek a stupid bug. And as a giant Spike crawls up. Meek says that he's going to need a bigger spear. The Hulk then tells Meek to back up. He needs some room and he slams his fist into the ground. The ground begins to split, causing the giant Spike to fall. And Elio tells everyone to hurry this up. She points to a nearby village and says that if they can get there, they'll be safe. Meanwhile, over at the village, the Red King radios to Kira telling her that he thought that he told her to kill the Green Scar. Kira shouts that they need Death's hands and Deathfire bombs to clear up this mess. The Red King smiles, telling her to relax. They're already on the way. Another Dreadnought appears and begins to drop those bombs, but not on the spikes. Kira watches as the bombs begin to circle around the village as she says that he is trapping the entire village with the spikes. And the Hulk looks up into the sky, smiling. Stupid pinkies. Kira then helps the village defend against the spikes with flamethrowers while the Hulk begins to throw boulders making a path in the village. As he gets there, he jumps on the wall telling Kira to burn him. The Red King tells her not just yet and the Hulk shouts, NO! Kira aims the gun and covers the Hulk in flames and he reaches up grabbing the gun telling her, THANKS! Those are starting to itch. He then begins to shoot down at the spikes and he tells everyone to back up. Kira grabs another gun and stands with him as the two burn the spikes down. Down in the village, Meek leads the younglings to safety, but the younglings say that they can sense something is there. Meek runs towards one of the silos and he opens up the door and he sees their queen chained up. Meek shouts, Queen! And the queen says, Hello, my king. A few seconds later, Meek and the rest of them burst out of the silo shouting that he will kill them all! And Elio tells him to stop, but Meek continues to shout that they are making her lay eggs for them to eat! Eat. Now he will eat them! But before Meek can bite off one of the villagers' heads, a spike shoots out stabbing into the queen. The Hulk grabs onto the end of the flamethrower, burning his hand, and then he jumps down, ripping the spike out of the queen. One of the hive runs up, burning the spike, and Meek asks if she's... And she tells him, Yes, little king, I will live. Korg then floats down on one of the transport platforms and he says that he's been busy. And the Hulk laughs. <laughs> it's time to blow this joint. While everyone holds off the spikes, Kira helps load everyone onto the transport platforms and then notices a small child alone crying. She runs over to get them and then the Red King tells her that she can't kill the Hulk. So now her and her precious civilians are just getting in his way. So this is where they say goodbye. Kira looks up to see the Dreadnought hover and then release more bombs. The child says that they are scared and Kira holds them close stating, close your eyes. The bombs fall and everyone turns back to the center of the village and through the fire, Kira walks up holding the child and as the wind blows, it blows the ashes of the child away. The Hulk reaches down and then he helps Kira onto the platform to help her get away from the mess. And as the group flies over the spikes, Harom says, you who are warbound, speak your true name and be bound to us forever. Kira recites her name as Kira the Old Straw, once the Emperor's shadow, and now she will fight by their side until they are all dead. Or until she splits the Red King from gullet to groin. The Hulk says that that works for him. And he shouts to the Dreadnought, Listen up! You tried to kill me with swords and spears, bombs and spikes, but you just made me mad. So get ready, Red King. We're coming for you! After escaping the spikes from the small village of Ansara, Hulk and the refugees regroup at their small encampment. The nameless brew tells the young hivelings of the stories of the Green Scar, who has set them free and the children cheer. But as the spirits of the refugees rise, Kira tells Hulk that it's time to move out. Meek says that they must wait. They have almost stopped the bleeding of their queen from the spikes. And Kira tells them that if they stay, the Imperials will catch up to them and they will all be dead. Just as she says that, a fiery blast shoots through the camp. 
Everyone turns back to see the Imperial Army herding the spikes in the direction of the camp. Kira stands before the army telling them to please listen, but the Imperial Captain shouts that the Emperor commands this. They won't be stopped until every rebel is dead. As the Imperial Army begins to push the spikes forward, Hulk says, forget this, and he slams his fist into the ground. The shockwave splits and cracks open the planet, causing the lava below to rise and wash over the spikes. While the others help the refugees escape, Meek flies up to the hover platforms and begins knocking and throwing the Imperial Army down into the lava. One of the Death's heads manages to shoot back up onto the Hulk's platform, causing it to tip over. Elio tries to grab a hold of the Hulk and Kira, but down in the lava, Korg tells her not to worry. He's got it covered. Just as the Hulk and Kira fall, Korg grabs a boulder, tossing it into the lava, creating a platform for the two of them to land on. And just then, a creature surfaces out of the lava, screaming! And Kira shouts that it's a macaw! Hulk laughs. <laughs> I've always loved the lava monsters, but I've got a better idea. He grabs Kira by the waist and he leaps off of the boulder and Meek pulls Korg out as Korg says that it will be tough to top that on a second date. An hour later, Hulk and the refugees continue on, but as everyone cheers at their victory, the Hive Queen tells Meek that he did all that he could. The Spike's infections have run too deep. They must run before it's too late. Meek shouts, no, he won't! However, the infection spreads over the Queen and she begins to lash out at everyone. Hulk grabs a club, telling Meek to get back, and Meek wrestles him down, telling him, you will not kill my Queen! He then looks at one of the flamethrowers on the ground and with sadness in his eyes, he burns the Spike along with his Queen. Everyone watches in silence, and as Meek stops the infection, he then kills the last remaining queen of the Hive. Harom tells Kira that it is time. They must see the Shadow Elders, they must listen, and they will help their cause. Hulk turns back, stating that he doesn't need their crummy, but Harom stops him, telling him that even he cannot fight the Imperials alone. And so, the refugees march through the deserts to find the Shadow Elders. As a passing sandstorm blows over, the Hulk pulls the tarp away, feeling a rumble coming out of the ground. And then he looks out to see several Corkers, and behind them, the Shadow Elders. Hulk runs in to battle the Corkers, and then one of the Elders tells Hulk that they did not come to fight. The Corkers came to find him. One of the refugees asks, who are these people? And Archie, the robot, tells him, Let's see, they are tall, gray, and wrinkled. I'd say that they're the Shadow Elders. One of the Elders calls out to Kira, asking why is she here? Should she not be serving the Emperor? And she tells him that she no longer serves the Emperor. He has released spikes on them, and it will bring doom to them all. The Elder says that she must go back. She must mend the rift. But her roam stops him, telling him, Can you not see? He has come. As the Elders look at the Hulk, a light begins to swirl around the group, and in a flash, the Elders alone with Hulk, Vanish. The light fades and the Hulk looks around the inside of a temple asking, What is this? One of the elders says that it is an ancient vessel that brought the shadow people here from their world. They only have traces of the old power left in their blood. So they fired up the ancient engines and created a great portal. It brought the Death's Heads, the Silver Surfer, and then him here. The Hulk asks, why? And the Elder goes on saying that they believed the old stories that said the Sakarsan will come and save their planet. However, before they can offer their support, he must first pass a test. That is, if he isn't afraid. The Elders gather around Hulk and suddenly he is shocked and the images start to flash before his eyes. The images are of when the Hulk had fought against his friends. And the voices of the Elders tell him that even though they are his friends, they challenged him and they will do so again because he is a monster. He laughs, telling him, yeah, but so are you. And one of the elders tells him to look deeper. The images begin to change, and then he sees Tony Stark, Reed Richards, and others, all telling him that everything he does ends up in death. He punches the image of Tony in a fit of rage, and then he shatters it. The images all begin to fade, and the elder asks, how can he unite when his heart is so full of hate? He is not the Sakarsan. Kira shouts that it doesn't matter. He stopped the spikes. He saved. But the Hulk stops her, telling her, it doesn't matter. And then he lifts up the Shadow People's ship, stating that he's got what he's come for anyways. Back outside, the spikes begin to surround the group outside and they attack. But as they do, the Imperial Dreadnoughts too begin to fly overhead. Just as the fighting begins against two of the groups, Hulk and Kira ride atop the Shadow People's ship, fending off the air attacks. Kira tells the Hulk that they could be riding on the inside. The missiles can't hurt the starship of the Shadow People. And the Hulk grabs one of the missiles out of the air and he throws it down into the spikes, telling her, Yeah, but this is a lot more fun. From inside of the ship, Archie says that he just about had the EMP ready and suddenly a light shines from the starship and all of the dreadnoughts begin to lose power and fall to the ground. The Hulk says, all right, next stop is Crown City. As everyone gets back in the ground, Hulk tells Meek, 
You can smell it, right? The spikes. They're trying to chem with them. Everyone looks around at the spikes not attacking, and the Hulk begins to walk towards one of the fallen ships containing the spikes. Before walking into the ship, the Nameless Brood says that they are calling for the Hulk inside of their ship, and Meek says they can't trust these stupid little spikes. So what are they gonna find inside? Hulk inside sees a larger formed spike, and he tells him, bigger spikes. Back outside, Elio and Harum wait for the Hulk's return when a group of Sakarsons walk up to Elio, telling her that these men have come to see her. They say the Red King's days are over, and they call for a queen! Suddenly, an explosion goes off in the distance, and Elio tells everyone that they will fight their way to the city. But before she can go very far, the people around Elio burst into flames, and the Red King floats down, telling them, It's always so satisfying cleaning house, isn't it? Now, would you like to die by incineration or decapitation? A loud stomp can be heard, and the Hulk asks, what about option three? I kick your ass. Before coming out, Meek says, These are the Spike Fathers. They are coming with them, telling their stories and sending their memories. They are known as the Spikes, killing spores that consume any organic material that they touch. But that is not who they truly are. In their natural form, they live out in space, absorbing the cosmic energies from the dying stars. Every few generations, they migrate, but as they passed by our planet, something went wrong and their ships crashed onto the surfaces. Without their cosmic energy, they lost their minds and souls and went insane, consuming everything that they touched. The Emperor's robots forced them into the ships and launched them on our shattered moon, locking them in the hull for generations. Now, the Emperor has brought them back and their children run insane through the world! The father then says that for a little while, they can help, only if they help in return. Back in the current time, the Red King knocks Hulk to the ground with his fiery sword, and Hulk tells Meek to come, so the Red King can see. That way, when he beats him to death, he'll see why. Suddenly, the Red King stops him because they see the lives and stories of all of those that he's affected, and when they fade, he tells everyone, What do you want from me? Tears? I killed him as my right, as my duty, as my pleasure. The Red King slashes at Hulk, and after breaking through his arm guard, the Hulk takes both of his fists and cracks the Red King across the face. After punching him away, the Red King fires two missiles, stating, Yeah, well I can get mad too. The Hulk walks through the blast, smacking him away, telling him, You're not mad enough. The Red King picks himself back up and he tells Hulk, I'll give you one last chance to kneel before me, or I'll burn everything that you've ever tried to save. The Hulk tells him, you're dead. And the Red King turns back, pushing a button, telling him, no, we're dead. The ground begins to crack, and through the splits, the lava starts to rise up, spewing and tossing into the air. Kira says that as the old strong, the planet speaks to her, and it cannot hold. The Red King has cracked its plates. Hulk listens to the refugees as they ask, what are we going to do? The planet is splitting, and we're all going to die. He then jumps down into the hole, and he begins to swim through the lava, down to the shattered plates. With all of his strength, he pulls, and he shifts, and he falls! Back up top, Kira says that the plates have been shifted, and Kord tells her, of course he did it, he's the Hulk. Seconds later, Hulk shoots out of the lava up into the air, and he punches through the Red King shield, shouting, DIE! The Red King's body is thrown through the city walls into the wild bot forest. Some of the locals shout that it's a wild bot, but the Red King gets up yelling, You're just stupid slaves! I am no wild bot! And then the sounds of clicking can be heard as a spike shoots through the Red King's back. As the rest of the wild bots come out, all that can be heard is the screams of the Red King. Hulk then lands in the middle of the city, crushing the Red King's pauldrons, telling everyone, The real monster of this planet is dead. Everyone begins to cheer, and Harome says that the war is over. Let the peace begin. Though the war with the Red King is over, the Hulk leaves with the Spike Fathers. As the night falls, the arena cheers for their new king, and as Korg hands Hulk the crown, Hulk asks, Was this your bright idea? Korg tells him that he did this because he knows that he can do this. He has the strength and the will. And as they look back at Hulk on the throne, the Spike Fathers all offer their tendrils to Hulk, sucking the gamma radiation. Kira watches and says that he cannot bear every burden of this world. And the Hulk responds with, Says who? As he grips into the throne, Kira holds his hand, and Harome looks back at the crown, quietly stating, May the prophet preserve you, King Hulk. And after finally defeating the Red King, hours pass as the Hulk sits on the throne as the Spike Fathers latch onto him. They are sucking him dry. Kira tells him that it's been seven hours, even he can't take. But the Hulk stops her, telling her, I'm the Hulk. I can take anything. As he groans, Kira watches as the Hulk's hand starts to change into a human's hand. Bruce Banner is finally there. And he says that so long as they feed on him, no one has to die. 
the Spike Fathers release themselves, giving their thanks, and they float off through the window. Bruce gets back up, and he takes off his cloak, and he reverts back to the Hulk, and he asks, How about we get some breakfast? Down in the city, Meek and Elo chase down a group of Imperial Loyalists as they run back into their temple. As Elo kills one of them, one of the Loyalists inside begs for her to spare them. She shouts, why should she? They supported the Red King while he and the woman that asks if that's Elo. And Elo asks if that's her mother. Meek runs in shouting, kill them all! And as he swings at her mother, Elo stops him telling him to wait! That's her mother. Meek tells her it doesn't matter! She helped the Emperor! One of the Hive brothers grabs Elo's mother, saying that it doesn't matter, they're killing her! Elo swings his sword back, cutting the Hive brother's face, and Meek points his spear, shouting, PINKIES! Elo shouts back, BUGS! And the Hulk crashes through the wall, calling them both PUNKS. He separates the two of them, and they continue shouting back and forth, and the Hulk tells him, FINE! You wanna argue? You can settle things in the great arena! As Meek's brothers and Elo's rebels face off in the arena, Korg tells them that this is their last chance to drop their weapons. As neither answers, Korg says, so be it. And the bell for the fight is rung. Both Meek and Elo charge at each other, but neither is attempting to really fight. Hulk slams his fist on the ground, shouting for them to hurry up and fight! 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 He runs in, knocking Elo and Meek away, telling them, if you don't want to fight, go ahead and fight me or die. Both groups start stabbing into the Hulk, and he continues to shout, come on! As the last spear is thrown into him, he tells them, this fight is over. We are all warbound now, so embrace your brothers or I will kill you myself. The next day, the Shadow Elders come to the palace to reestablish their Shadow Pact with the new king. They give Hulk an offer. So long as he guarantees their ancient land rights, they will pledge their support to him in the time of war and provide him with a Shadow Guard. Kira, the Old Strong, was the Emperor's Guard and Hulk stops them, telling them, I don't need a Shadow Guard. I want a queen. He holds out his hand to Kira, and she takes it. As the two walk off, Korg says that he believes that they have themselves a treaty. After a short moment of preparation, Hulk returns to his chambers, and Kira sits kneeling before a blue flame. She tells him that she is a shadow, and for their marriage to be true, they must complete the shadow ceremony. So will he kneel with her as she kneels with him? Hulk kneels, stating, I will. And then Kira takes his hand over the blue flame, asking if he will burn with her, as she burns with him. And the Hulk says, I will. Kira then asks, will he bear his body and soul with her as she bears it with him? And the Hulk remains silent. She tells him that she must know him, all of him, so please show her. He looks at her and tells her, all right. His body begins to revert and seconds later, Bruce is there and he tells her that his name is Bruce. And she asks, so the Hulk let him out so that she could see all of him. Kira stands for a moment and then she kisses Bruce. And as Bruce reaches back, his hand begins to change back into the Hulk. Meanwhile, over in the science hall, Meek and the Nameless Brood walk through the science hall as Meek says how the Pinkies will get their queen. But the Hulk is forgetting about them. Forgetting about their dying queen. Forgetting what he's made for. Being angry. Smashing and revenge. The Nameless Brood says that maybe it is time for forgetting. Now come so that they can be alone in the dark. As Meek grabs onto the Nameless Brood's hand, he hits a button and the room lights up and the video of Reed telling Bruce that he's sorry starts to play. Meek watches and says, Ah, this will make the Hulk remember his anger. With the reforming of the government, he spends the evening sleeping with his new queen. And as he lays, he hears Meek's voice call out to him that he has something to show him. Hulk hurries over to the science hall telling Meek, This better be good, whatever it is. And as the recording from Hulk's ship plays, Meek says that it's the recording that he brought. His name is Bruce, right? Hulk watches and listens, and then he says, They tried to kill me. He smashes the screen, and he looks back at the researchers. He doesn't say a word, and he leaves. A few moments later, Kira begins to wake up asking what's going on, and then she notices the Hulk carrying her as he leaps from the palace. When they land, Kira looks around and says that this is the steps. Why bring her here? Hulk tells her that she once said that this is a place of peace, that if he were to come here, he would never have to fight again, so maybe they should just go. She kisses him, telling him that she will go wherever he wishes, but he does not need to fear himself. They fought for this land, bled for this land, and now look what's been brought to them. Kira goes on saying that he doesn't need to run away because this is where he belongs, with his people, with his queen, and his children. She moves his hand to her stomach and his eyes widen. Later in the traitor district that was destroyed by the Red King's rampage, the loud booms can be heard stopping everyone around. Everyone rushes over to see what's going on and Meek flies in asking, what are you doing? Hulk tells him, war is over. Now we make peace. However, the Red King's enemies still surround us. So I will have a Roman core go to the Philians to negotiate a treaty. Archie will go to the Twisted Wood to speak with the Wildbots. Oh, frats. 
Hulk then points to Meek and Ello, telling them that they will help him with the spikes. But first, they have some cleaning to do. After they begin to clean the district, Hulk and the others head over to the spikes to help pull their ship out of the ground. As all of the spikes begin to board their ship, he asks, what are they saying? And Meek says that he's coming with the big spike, but they're not saying anything. He's just happy to return to the stars. Once everyone is ready, the two ships fly into space, but before letting the spikes go, Hulk stops by the shattered moon to help with the captive spikes. He jumps out of the ship to open up the sealed hulls, and as the spores return to the fathers, Elo says that she can feel it. It's like a million voices all going home. As the spores leave, Elo sees Hulk burning and asks what he's doing. Meek tells her that he's going home too. He's just taking the fast way. As Hulk falls back to the planet, Takira runs out to see what's going on, and Korg says something fell, but he can't tell what it is. Harom tells him it's alright, and in fact, it's perfect. Back in the city, everyone can feel the voices from those lost by the spores, hearing the voices telling everyone goodbye. As the Hulk returns, everyone cheers for the Green King. So much so that even the children have built a statue of Hulk for when he first landed on the planet. He looks around and he asks what is all of this, and Kira just tells him to smile, behold, and smile. She says it's time for them to just live. And just then a beeping sound can be heard from the ship. The recording of Reed begins to play, and the message, warning, warp core compromise, begins to play. Hulk runs to the ship telling everyone to run away, and he rips it out of the ground. He throws the ship as hard as he can into the sky, and he tells everyone to get down. A second later, the ship creates a massive explosion. As the blast hits the ground, the Hulk shields Kira, but she tells him not to worry. She will never leave him. Everyone who's away from the city can see and feel the explosion as it rips through the ground. Along the pathway to the Philians, Korg asks what just happened, and he turns back and says, It was the humans. Their shuttle exploded. The ground beneath them begins to crack, and lava shoots out of the ground, burning everyone! As Harone tries to save the people, Korg says his face turned to stone. Harone quietly says the Shadow Elders are dead. The strength of the Old Strong has been passed down to him. But it's too late. The humans have killed them. They have killed their whole world. As the ground burned, Meek flies overhead to the Shadow Starship, and he tells everyone to grab a line. Korg grabs one, and he tells Harom to take his hand, but as Harom just looks up, he stares. Korg tells him that they are warbound to the end, so either he takes his hand, or he will come down into the magma and get him! Harom takes Korg's hand, and as they lift, the ground breaks apart, covering the entire area in lava. Back at the center of the explosion, Hulk tells himself that the people said that he was the Sakarsen, but he was the world breaker all along. He just didn't know that they were too. The stupid humans with their stupid shuttle. They can't do anything right. He picks up Kira's body and he thinks about how he wishes that he could just die, burn away into nothing. But now the bomb has made him stronger. Soon. Kira's body turns to ash from the heat, and he slams his fist into the ground, ripping a giant piece of the earth apart, throwing it, shouting, Give them back! The smoke begins to fade, and the Hulk falls to his knees, asking for them to give her back. He looks up, and he sees the Shadow Starship. The Starship lands, and from the hatch, Harom, Korg, Meek, Elo, and the Nameless Brood come out. He tells them to leave him alone, and Harom says that they are warbound to the end. Hulk sighs stating that this is the end. Nothing left to save, nothing left to smash. Elo tells him, perhaps not here, but the robot has a map of the whole universe. The Nameless Brew says that she is sure that he could figure out some place that he'd like to go. And so with the remaining Sakarans, Hulk and the others worked, forged, and completed. Now with the tools that they need, it is time for Hulk to set a course for Earth. Now, out in space, the Hulk is in or out, riding atop of a ship that carries his warbound, punching any asteroid in his path. As they approach the Earth, he lands on the moon with a whack room. Medusa stands behind him, wind blowing in the air. You come unannounced to the land of the Inhumans, girded for war. But you cannot win this fight. You have faced my lord before, Hulk. You were defeated. He sees Black Bolt standing by her side. But she continues. Black Bolt's master blow can shatter your bones. His merest whisper can blow your broken body into the sun. And he glares at them. You shot me into space. He begins to turn and face them. Approach Black Bolt and Medusa. You killed my world. And Medusa tells him to stop. Instead, he grabs Black Bolt by the arms. Never. And Black Bolt whispers, enough. 
The force of that attack blows the Hulk back, but he holds on to Black Bolt's arms. The force continues to blow against his face, and it continues to hold on. Until it's too much, that simple whisper throws him across the moon, burying him. As Black Bolt tries to walk away, the Hulk informs him. I didn't come here to hear you whisper. Black Bolt turns around to see the Hulk leaping right into him. I came to hear you scream! Down on the planet, in a city, the ship cruises over. It projects an image of the Hulk for the entire planet to see. Puny humans, I have come here to smash. But I want you to know who's to blame. You call them heroes. I call them monsters. Iron Man, Mr. Fantastic, Doctor Strange, Black Bolt. They shot me into space, sent me to a planet where I could be hurt and die. But I survived with my war bound. Korg, Meek, Elio, Harome, and my queen. But your heroes also sent a bomb that went off and killed millions of people. And my queen. You have 24 hours to evacuate this city. And when I return, I want those four heroes. If they are not here. He then holds up a beaten and bloodied Black Bolt for all to see. I will do this to your whole stinking planet. Director Tony Stark flies into space to try and get back the satellites that the Hulk's troops took upon entry. But it doesn't work. They're prepared for whatever it is that he wanted to do. And then Doctor Strange appears before him. The Hulk withstood Black Bolt's voice. What do you think your machines will do, Stark? He's never been angrier. Therefore, he's never been stronger. Use your magic, Steven. Send him away. And have him tear apart someone else's world. Come back stronger. Now we will deal with this. We have 24 hours. Each of us must prepare in our own way. Meanwhile, with that broadcast around the world, many people saw it, and many other heroes other than the four that the Hulk came for are preparing. There are plenty of heroes around, and they all need to try and stop the Hulk. A young man walks out of a diner in his civilian clothes, walking to a motorcycle, and a voice speaks in his head. No, this is not our affair. And the young man tells him, but you will obey me. No, no, there are people in New York. They need our help. A heat begins to overcome the man and then his head lights on fire, revealing a skull. This entire world needs our help. Are you so foolish that you would jeopardize billions of souls to save only a few? He falls to his knees, putting his hands to his face. My name is Johnny Blaze. I'm a world famous stunt cyclist who holds nine Guinness World Records. I sold my soul to the devil without even considering that I might not work out. In other words, I am that foolish. He hops on the motorcycle and the tires ignite and the Ghost Rider rides to New York to stop the Hulk before he can kill millions. He hits Brooklyn and he sees an army trying to evacuate everyone, so he rides up the Brooklyn Bridge and he leaps over it, catapulting himself into the air, crossing over buildings. He tells himself, the scary part about a jump isn't the jump, it's the landing. And he comes to a screeching halt in front of the Hulk. He looks him in the face. Here we go. Bruce, listen to me. I know what it's like to have something burning up inside of you that wants vengeance, but you can control it. Look around, man. This has gone too far. The Hulk smiles. He actually smiles. Bravo. And he claps his hands together with a shockwave that throws the Ghost Rider into a nearby building. Ghost Rider gets up realizing the Hulk just threw him aside like he was nothing. And he looks at his bike and he has an idea. He hops on it and he begins to ride down the street, flinging his chain. It cuts into the side of a building and then the Hulk looks at it, interested. Hmm. It cuts into another side as Johnny rides around the block. Hmm. And the motorcycle roars as the Hulk sees what Ghost Rider is doing. Because then he drags the whole building behind him, dropping it on the Hulk. He brings the bike to a screeching halt as he turns to face him. I did it. And then he hears something. Something angry. Something determined. The big green hand reaches out of the ground, grabbing the Ghost Rider and yanking him through the street into the subway. He holds the Ghost Rider up by both of his arms and he tells him, Stay out of my way. This is none of your concern. The voice in Johnny's head tells him, He's right you know. And Johnny screams out, shut up! Referring to the voice in his head. But the Hulk, you didn't hear that voice. So he throws Ghost Rider into the sky. Before he gets high enough, he throws the chain back down, wrapping it around the Hulk's neck, stopping his ascent. Then he slams himself back onto the ground, hooked onto the Hulk. He rolls onto his back, realizing that he's holding the chain, and the voice asks him, what's your plan now? Johnny hops on his bike, realizing that he has to get the Hulk out of New York, and he hits top speed, pulling the Hulk by the chain. Once he feels it go taunt, he realizes he has the Hulk and he pulls him out of the ground. Except the Hulk tied the chain to a subway car and the Ghost Rider's just been pulling that. The Ghost Rider realizes that he's been tricked and he hears boom. 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 And he looks around and he can't see the Hulk, but he looks up. 
The Hulk is standing on his spaceship, looking down onto the streets, and he sees Ghost Rider. You beauty bug, squash you like bug. The Hulk leaps off of the ship as Ghost Rider realizes what's coming, and then with a loud BOOM! The Hulk buries the Ghost Rider into the ground with the full force that he can deliver. Meanwhile, Doctor Strange and Iron Man are watching the battle and Steven informs Tony that the Ghost Rider has just fallen. The Ghost Rider is a being of boundless power, he is godlike. Except the human that he inhabits is like a safety to keep him in check. Steven sensed that Johnny was in control of the Ghost Rider, not the Spirit of Vengeance. Therefore, he was much weaker than he could have been. And then he sees something that causes him to panic. With the fall of Johnny, the safety's off. Tony asks, isn't that good? And Steven tells him, no. A spark ignites in the eye of the Ghost Rider and BOOM! The entire ground erupts into a massive explosion, taking out multiple blocks of Brooklyn. The Hulk takes the blast to the face and he stares at the center of it as the Ghost Rider rides again. He lands with another crackening thud and his entire body is on fire. He is the true Ghost Rider, full of vengeance. The Hulk stares him down and the Ghost Rider revs the bike. The Hulk looks on him again. And with the bike idling, the Ghost Rider turns and leaves. Tony asks Steven what just happened as Steven tells Tony, I expected the true Ghost Rider to leave, because the Ghost Rider only avenges the innocent, which we, Tony, are not. As Damage Control is standing there doing their job, the current Ant-Man, Eric O'Grady, is being spoken to. He tells the woman in front of him, Abigail, to turn around. Because above them is a giant spaceship hovering over the area. Ant-Man looks up. You know, there's something you don't see every day. The Hulk shows a holographic image of him holding Black Bolt's body. Now the city will fall. You have 24 hours to evacuate. When I return, I want to see Mr. Fantastic, Iron Man, and Doctor Strange. If they aren't here, I'll do this to your whole stinking planet. Abigail turns to Ant-Man and tells him that she's getting out of this city. She can't be here. Ant-Man secretly helps her by shrinking down and handling issues that are in front of her on her escape because the whole city is in a panic for the next 24 hours. No one is sure if the Hulk is lying or not. He's a hero after all. Ant-Man sits on a roof at the end of the 24 hours with Monstro discussing if this is actually going to happen when black a boom The Hulk is thrown through every building that they are on. Ant-Man shrinks down to avoid damage and then he goes looking for Monstro. He finds his friend recovering and then he shrinks down telling Monstro that it's time to play hero. And he's off. Our battle of Ant-Man versus the Hulk will begin. The Hulk is on the ground recovering from whatever hit him. So Ant-Man jumps onto his face. Hulk doesn't know that he's there. So Ant-Man crawls into his mouth with the idea that maybe he isn't so strong on the inside. As he passes the teeth, the Hulk's tongue knocks him into the roof of his mouth. Ant-Man slides down his gullet, grabbing onto the dangly bit into the back of his mouth. Yes, I know it's called the uvula. Did you know it prevents food from getting into your nose? Anyway, Ant-Man lets go of the uvula and slides down the Hulk's throat. Over the teeth and through the tongue, look out stomach, here I come! But the Hulk is large, and Ant-Man keeps falling. Eventually, any day now, as he falls into the stomach, he sees what appears to be a can of Old Spice body spray and a whole bag of chips and a fork. Seriously, what has the Hulk been eating? Ant-Man looks around thinking that if he can tear the lining of the Hulk's stomach, then maybe he can cause him enough pain to stomp him. He winds up and he pulls back his arm and he throws a punch! And he possibly broke his own hand. He stands on the side of the stomach thinking, well, that didn't work. He stuff is steel in here! Time for plan B. He ignites the flamethrowers on his back, preparing to burn the Hulk's stomach when suddenly there's a lot of movement and he's thrown around. He hits the wall and the Old Spice can is coming right at him, so he ducks and he dodges. He sits there wondering if that was maybe a delayed reaction to his punch, or did the Hulk like trip and fall? Outside of the Hulk, he's locked in a heated battle. Explosions are going off all around him and he braces himself for another hit. Back inside, Ant-Man crawls over to the side of the stomach again and he prepares to use his flamethrowers all over again. With a whoosh, he burns away at the Hulk's stomach lining. Ant-Man is happy with himself. He did it. And then he sees that he didn't even singe the stomach. Once again, the Hulk's stomach can withstand it. Ant-Man sits down, realizing that this is pointless. He may as well go loot some of the stuff that everyone's looting. You see, this Ant-Man, Eric O'Grady, he isn't exactly known as the greatest hero. He's kind of a scumbag. He crawls out of the Hulk's nose and he lands on the chest plate looking around. And in front of him is Iron Man in the Hulkbuster suit coming right at the Hulk. Hulk counters by tackling Iron Man and they both go flying into a nearby building with Ant-Man in tow. He falls, flips, and tosses in the air unable to stabilize himself and with blood pouring down his face and most of his bones broken, Eric pops his helmet off trying to find the grow button because he knows as Ant-Man he'll never be found if he remains small. And just as he passes out, he hits the button and falls unconscious. He wakes up days, weeks, maybe months later. Under arrest for his actions. I did say that this Ant-Man isn't typically a nice guy, but he did survive his fight with the Hulk.
So, what was the next plan? Well, there is a superhero that everyone knows can give the Hulk a run for his money. The Sentry. He has immense power and they tell him that the Hulk needs his help. He calms down when the Sentry is around. So Robert lights up his powers and as he begins to walk out, he stops at the doorway. He's afraid of leaving his home, afraid of losing control, of becoming that villain again and therefore he won't go help. Back at New York, Spider-Man calls out to the citizens, keep moving! He's currently wearing the black suit because in his own adventures, Aunt May was shot and he was seeking the killer, wearing the black suit to show that he wasn't cheerful any longer. But that's a completely different story that doesn't involve the Hulk. We'll cover it at your request, and then we'll link it down below if you're watching this video much later. Spider-Man calls out to the civilians to keep moving, but some of the people aren't having it. An argument begins and S.H.I.E.L.D. is trying to escort these people from their homes. They are the same people who shot the Hulk into space and they started this. Now they're trying to take these individuals' houses? Spider-Man looks at the man bringing this up. Uh, you're mixing things up pretty good there, pal. But before he can finish, there's a wakoom! And She-Hulk, Jennifer, lands nearby, correcting them that that wasn't the Hulk that they heard landing. It was the She-Hulk. The He-Hulk smashes about a thousand times harder than that. You really want to hang around and meet him? Spider-Man whips to the ceiling, dangling upside down next to her. Yeah, what she said. A shield ship then flies over the city, calling out that this is their last chance to evacuate. If they just think that they want help, shield's telepaths will get a hold of them and evacuate them. One of the civilians looks at Spider-Man. Who was that Black Bolt guy? And Spider-Man tells him that he thought he was the second most powerful being in the universe, so don't worry. They've got the blonde bombshell, the numero uno, the... And that's when he sees Iron Man in the Hulkbuster suit. Aw, nuts. That's not the effect I was going for, Spider-Man. No offense, boss, but uh, we were expecting the sentry. Up above, the Hulk lands with a crack. Iron Man looks at the Avengers. Don't attack until he falls or I do. The matter that he gets, the stronger he'll get. And whoosh! Iron Man takes off. Hulk leaps into combat and they meet in the middle. With a thudding boom so loud that it shatters the glass of the nearby buildings. The Avengers are forced to the ground and the helicopters are thrown out of the air. And the civilians now realize the power of the Hulk and what they need to fear. But on the street level, there are two individuals dumb enough to try and get the story of the fight. Sally the journalist and Kenny the cameraman. And with a KANG! Hulk hits Iron Man into a nearby billboard that flies off of the building landing next to them. You okay, Sal? Kenny asks her. And she sees the billboard just crushed her car. No, Kenny, I'm not. I think we're at war again, only this time, I don't think we're gonna win. They steal another car and they begin to see people panicking as they drive into the city. But the people aren't trying to flee from the situation. They're still in the town. They're looting. They're going around robbing stores. And she turns to Ben Ulrich asking what's going on and he informs her. The ones who remain must be either crazy or poor. I hear people are coming back into the city like it's Mardi Gras. They then round up Ben and they see rioters and things begin to get thrown at their car. And that's when they realize they need to find a safe location and head off to find somewhere that they can get photos. Back Back with the two boys that we all want to see slug it out. Iron Man dives into the Hulk, forcing him to the ground. Hulk swings away, punching Iron Man in the head. Iron Man returns the favor by rocket blasting his punches into the Hulk, and they hit the ground, destroying everything around them, leaving a massive crater. Iron Man stands there, and the Hulk gets up. But what you don't know is going on at this moment is that Ant-Man is hanging out of the Hulk's nose. He was inside of the Hulk at this moment, and the fall made him realize that shrinking and entering the Hulk was kind of a bad idea. But we have a video covering that, because at that exact moment, Moment, Iron Man launches into the Hulk's stomach, throwing him through the buildings and unknowingly throwing Ant-Man into the air away from the fight. The Hulk and Iron Man go through multiple buildings with a kaboom, kaboom, smack -oom. And around the world, everyone is watching it, from the president to the fans in an arena in Texas to Rick Jones in a bar. The Hulk lands in Central Park where he slowly begins to get back up from that last hit. She-Hulk sees the jets launching missiles at her cousin and she calls out to them to wait, but every missile hits the park with a loud kaboom. The fire burns and the ground is destroyed and the Hulk remembers the last time that he was in this. The last time that he saw this level of destruction. The death of his wife. The death of Kyra. He calls out her name remembering all of the good days. Getting to know her. Standing with her. The death of her. He remembers holding her body as it disintegrated in the explosion telling her that he would never leave her. And his anger raged on, and it grew out of control. And in his eyes, you could see the rage as he yells out, You killed her! Iron Man sees what's coming, and he has no words other than, Oh, hell. Hulk hits him so hard that he splinters the entire suit. They launch into the sky, and they land on top of Avengers Tower. And that's when the Hulk doesn't stop. He raises his arms, and he double hammer fists, slamming Iron Man's suit, smashing each floor of the tower as they go through it. The Avengers themselves are just forced to watch. Iron Man takes one hell of a beating over and over as Hulk tears apart the entire suit and at the bottom of the tower he stands up drooling with his rage 
screaming out to anyone who dare approach him. Elsewhere in New York, Iron Fist jumps into a rooftop where he calls out to Doctor Strange. You can't just hide here. Luke, Spider-Woman, Spider-Man, they're all out there and the Hulk's gonna kill them. Strange tells him the Hulk was never a killer. But Danny stops him there. Maybe his attitude slightly adjusted when his friend shot him into space, blew up his wife, and a million other people. Why don't you just stop this, Strange? You want me to send him away again so he can return even matter? And Echo asks the question that we're all wondering. No, just kill him and lose my soul forever. There's no other way. Pray for me, children, as I have begun my incantations. I'm searching for a hero who can defeat and redeem the Hulk at the same time. But it will only work if he lets me in. Back with the Hulk, he slams his fist into the ground. Luke Cage looks at him and all the heroes are standing there. If we're gonna do this, let's do this. He's only one guy. And that's when the Hulk's friends all land. We are war bound of Sakaar, Harom the Shamed, Korg the Cronin, Elio Kafif, Meek the Unhived, no name of the brood, and we stand with the Hulk. Ares begins to walk forward, prepared to bring this battle to an end, and that's when She-Hulk stops him. She tells everyone to stand back. Bruce Banner is her cousin, and if he's in there, he'll listen to her. She steps forward. Some mess, huh, Bruce? Let me help. Meek asks her. Can you bring back the Hivelings who died in Crown City? Can you bring back the mother of Elio, the elders of her own? Can you bring back the Hulk's bride? She-Hulk snars. I'm not talking to you, bug. And the Hulk steps forward. Walk away, Jennifer. Bruce. If Tony and the others were involved, we'll figure this out. We'll put them on trial. You know me, I'll stand by you to the end. But we have to do this right. Walk away, Jennifer, No. And she looks her cousin in the eyes, the hurt and angry eyes of the Hulk. I can't, Bruce. Then stop talking and fight. Jennifer gets ready and she tells the Avengers to stand back. She won't throw the first punch. So the Hulk growls as he does it for her. She dodges and throws one back, landing on his nose. So he grabs her by the mouth, slamming her into the ground. She looks up and the only thing that she could say is God help us all. At that moment, the Hulk slams Ares into the ground and the Avengers rush in to continue this fight. Everyone from Spider-Woman to Doc Samson to Spider-Man and Miss Marvel are all going in to continue this. Elsewhere, Sally and her cameraman are looking over the city trying to get a spot for some good photos when something comes flying into the nearby building damaging the sides of it. She runs down the fire escape trying to see what it was when Luke Cage gets up brushing himself off. Ugh, pardon me folks, I gotta get back to where the action was. She looks around again and she begins to smell something and the civilians notice the gas main has been ruptured. To make matters worse, there's a little girl hanging from the fire escape about to fall to her death. Everyone panics and runs off saying that there isn't any hope and that's when we see Daredevil leaping in to save the day. The girl screams as she begins to fall and he swoops in grabbing her out of mid-air, setting her softly on the ground. Sally walks over asking Daredevil how it's all going and he stands up looking at the boy who is now holding his sister. You need to find your parents to get out of here. Our parents left us a week ago and we aren't going to any evacuation center. Look, if you go to the center, I'll make it a point to come around here and make sure that you're safe until something can be done in this part of town. And as the young boy walks off, he says to himself, yeah, and just how do you think you're going to keep that promise? Daredevil looks down and shakes his head out of the mouths of babes. Sally looks at Daredevil. I guess he doesn't have very high expectations right now. Why would he, Miss Floyd? Let's say the Hulk destroys the city. How high in the priority list do you think Hell's Kitchen is going to be? Sally calls up Ben, telling him that she has Luke Cage, Daredevil, and Hell's Kitchen. Probably another story that they can cover. And as Ben sees a building getting hit, he tells her that he has his own story brewing. The Fantastic Four are now fighting the Hulk and the Warbound. Iron Man stands before Professor X, a member of the Illuminati, the group that blasted Hulk off into space, and he asks him, what would you have voted if you were here? Because Professor X was not a part of the decision to blast Hulk into space. Would he agree to send him away or would he have fought it? Well, there's someone else who wants that answer. And with a crack, the Hulk lands demanding something. Xavier, I want Xavier. No! If you are just now joining us, the Hulk has come back angry due to the death of his wife, and he's already beaten Black Bolt and the Ghost Rider. B sends the students down into the basement knowing that this probably won't end well and he walks to the front door. Ah, uh, hello br- Hulk? Xavier, bring him here. You know I can't do that. Out of my way! I'll find him myself! And as the Hulk looms over Beast, creating a shadow on his very face, a terrifying, angry shadow, the Beast tells him, I'm afraid I can't do that either. So the Hulk smashes Beast into the door. Wasn't asking. The students all run out and the battle against the X-Men has begun. They all blast him, throwing him off his balance. And Beast looks at a student, Josh, asking if he's ready. He has the powers of healing and death touches. They both know that it won't kill the Hulk, but it should overload his healing factor. So Beast gets up running back 
into the fight with Josh on his back. The Hulk slams both of his fists onto the ground and he gets up as Beast runs in. Josh touches him using the full power of his death touch. Beast stops behind him with the student. Hulk, you may want to rethink this. Do you know what we did? And he turns with anger in his eyes, gritting his teeth. You made me matter. He grabs a piece of the building and he slams it onto all of them. Stupid mutants. I don't need my healing factor to beat you punks. A telekinetic mutant swoops in, so the Hulk claps, rupturing his eardrums. And another then pours her sand abilities onto him. So the Hulk tears the waterline out, spraying them. Beast leaps in. Damn it, Banner! These are kids! And as he wipes his mouth, he tells Beast, Don't talk to me about kids. Another the mutant runs in and the Hulk knows this one. You're the one that controls his body parts when you're in pieces, right? So he pops off the mutant's arms and he throws them. Can you control them while they're in Connecticut? X-23 pops her claws with a schnick and she jumps in as the Hulk grabs both of her hands and begins to swing her. She pops out the claw on her foot and slashes at his face. He drops her and Beast calls out, he's hurt, everyone hit him. But the Hulk gets up with a cut across his eyes, punching anyone near him. And then he grabs X-23, lifting her into the air and he hurls her into a building. It didn't have to be like this. I just wanted Xavier, but no one makes me weak again. He begins to slam the students down, and as he prepares to kill one, a huge cut slashes into his back. You're leaving a real impression beating on kids, bub. Wolverine leaps into the air, but it's grown-up time. With blood pouring down his back, the Hulk turns around to see the X-Men have arrived. This is the fight I was expecting. Bring it on! And that's when Xavier walks out. I believe you said you're here for me. Now that I've seen my students to safety, you've got your wish. The Hulk looks at him. Xavier, you're walking again. I can fix that. So Professor X places his fingers on his temple and he begins to use his powers that he has. Except there's something wrong. He can't control anything. The rage in the Hulk is out of control. He sees what the Hulk endured on that planet. Weakened and enslaved. The trials that he faced. That he found happiness, friends, a kingdom, and a wife. And a child was on the way. And that's when Xavier sees what happened. The bomb and the death of it all. I know you weren't at the vote, Professor Rex. But according to Black Bolt, you were supposed to be. So I want to know. How would you have voted? The honest answer is that I wouldn't have agreed to exile you. But I would have agreed to sending you away until we found a cure. Perhaps I can atone. So I will surrender willingly. Smart move. Don't worry, you'll have Stark and the others to keep you company soon. As the Hulk reaches down, Colossus stops him. One moment. The Professor may have surrendered, but we have not. Hulk sees the X-Men. Beast, Colossus, Emma Frost, Cyclops, Wolverine, and Kitty Pride. And he asks them, Is this really how you want it? All of you? And Cyclops looks back at him. All of us. And it begins again. Cyclops opens up as he calls out, Max Power! Blasting the Hulk, burning away in his skin. And the Hulk grabs Cyclops by the head. Kitty Pride leaps in, grabbing Cyclops. Cyclops and Wolverine follows up, cutting at the Hulk's stomach. So the Hulk backhands him into the tree line. Beast, Emma, and Colossus jump in and they start swinging. And the Hulk calls out to them to stop. You can't even hurt me. But the whole point was to distract him so that Kitty can grab his arm and legs and phase them into the ground. As they're debating what to do next, the Hulk stands up. He just stands up, tearing his own limbs out of the ground. And then he collapses, sending the X-Men flying. With the X-Men all taken down, the students look on and the Stepford sisters have an idea. An alarm goes out to all of the mutants, to everyone that they are needed. It's time to stop the Hulk. Back at the fight, the Hulk throws Beast aside and then he grabs Emma Frost, even though she's in her diamond form. He slams her into the ground, burying her so that she can't move and can't change out of her diamond form. Colossus punches at him so they lock arms. The two men begin to press against each other, trying to force the other back. And then while that's happening, Hulk bends Colossus' arms backwards, snapping them like little metal twigs. And then Wolverine jumps in. Leave Petey alone. It's always about you and me anyway. Wolverine takes a swing at Hulk as he leaves backwards. And and then Wolverine gets in his face and the Hulk grabs him with one hand and he smashes his face with the other. Wolverine swings and the Hulk punches and they go back and forth for a few moments until Hulk questions, what will happen to Wolverine's brain if it's smashed against your metallic skull over and over? So he hits him and he hits him and eventually Wolverine is done. And that's when Juggernaut finally arrives out of his outfit with the Stepford sisters having called for help. With a crack, they punch each other. The Juggernaut is unstoppable. Once he's going, his power is magic based and it causes him to be an unstoppable force. The Hulk, he gets stronger when he gets angrier. The problem is, the Hulk is practically invulnerable and the Juggernaut, well, he's not while in this state. After a couple of swings, the Hulk buries the Juggernaut and then he turns around to see the rest of the X-Men who heard the call and were able to arrive. Multiple X-Men leap in to battle the Hulk and he gets hit with all kinds of mutant powers. Lightning, energy, strength and just some weird mutant stuff. But he crushes them all. He kicks people into Jersey. He flexes to pop out knives in his shoulders, throwing them at the wielder and then 
headbutting him into submission. But in the end, Nightcrawler bamps the Hulk outside of the schoolyard as their only plan. While at first everyone's asking why they only teleported him right outside of the schoolyard, that's when the Blackbird plane is thrown at him. But nothing stops the Hulk as he throws it aside and walks back into the schoolyard. He stares at the X-Men and Professor X. Is this what you wanted? Are you happy now? And Wolverine stands again and then he's thrown outside again. As the Hulk presses on behind him, the Juggernaut has returned, but this time he is fully suited up in his armor and uniform, wielding all of his power. There's a kawam! And they both punch at each other. The punches are thrown and with the powers of the Juggernaut actually slamming the Hulk into the ground, they then lock arms and with their powers combined, they're locked into place. So the Hulk uses his brain. If nothing can stop the Juggernaut, then keep going! He shouts as he throws the Juggernaut into the water. He steps up to Professor Rex, who tells him again, I'm not going to resist. And another student leaps in, telling the Hulk that she won't allow this. The Hulk grabs her. You stupid mutants. I will make him feel my suffering. You cannot stop me. So why even try? He throws her out of the window and the professor calls out. He runs out to check on his student. And it's there in the X-Men's graveyard that the Hulk finds the student and the professor there. She's crying and the professor is just sad. She looks at the Hulk. You want to talk about suffering? Look around you. The girl gets up, putting her hand on some of the graves. Her name is Lori Collins. All she wanted was for people to like her for who she was, but she got shot in the head at 16. And this is Brian Cruz. He loved his powers and he loved being here, and he lost it all on M-Day in his life as well, along with 41 other kids, because some mutant hater blew them up, like your wife was. Don't tell me that we haven't suffered like you. Don't ever tell us not to fight for what we have left. You're trying to do exactly what your enemies did to you. Destroy what happiness we've managed to find in this world that hates us. For something the professor didn't even do. Maybe we can't stop you, but don't expect us to fight any less hard than you. The Hulk finally stops, and he thinks about this. He turns his back to the student and the professor. You consider this your fault, Xavier. My guess is you should. He grits his teeth. You're already living in hell. He leaps away, leaving the professor with the student. And the professor looks at her, and he embraces her. The Hulk and his Warbound leap into battle while the Fantastic Four try to build a weapon to stop him. The Hulk is still after Reed Richards and Doctor Strange as Black Panther is trying to help. And Reed tells him to get out of here. He has nothing to do with the Hulk's exile and he needs to go. But T'Challa turns to him. Unfortunately, you have made it our fight. You have made it the world's fight, Reed. And now that the Hulk has smashed the Avengers, you'll need every one of us if we're going to have any hope of stopping him. Reed tries to stop him, but it's Sue who tells Reed to stop. Johnny looks over at the city to see the big green dot getting closer and leaping his way to them. Because the Hulk is done with the Avengers, and he's done playing. As he tries to land in front of them, Storm hits him with a great wind gust, throwing him into a building. And the rest of the Warbound all jump in, telling them to just give up Reed Richards and they'll leave. As they throw the Warbound off course, Johnny gets up over the Hulk to hit him with a full blast of a supernova. The building that he is on is blown to pieces and he feels the fiery power of the Human Torch. The blast is so mighty that it throws the Warbound back further and the heroes all feel its heat. But once it's done, in the very center stands the angriest man on the planet, the Hulk. Looking down at the street, Ben Grimm, the Thing, sees the Hulk standing there and decides that it's time to get involved. As he leaps off of the building, landing right in front of him, he runs in. It's clobbering time and he tries to take a right hook to the Hulk's jaw with a little blood coming out of the Hulk's nose. He looks back at him. All right then. And they leap in locking arms. The thing gets a shot into his gut and then to the Hulk's face. But the Hulk returns with both fists on the sides of the thing's head. Everyone looks in horror as the Hulk raises both of his fists to finish this. And then there's a bright light glowing in front of him. He turns to that light and it tells him, hello Hulk. He lightens up for a second as he looks up to see Century Golden Man. One of the Warbound jumps down asking what's going on and the Thing explains. Century and the Hulk are real friends. The Century always had the ability to calm down the Hulk. This is over. And as the Hulk reaches up, Cork tells the Thing it is. The Hulk smashes Reed's little device and then takes a shot at Reed's head. Except the Invisible Woman stops the hit and pleads with Bruce to stop this now. So the Hulk asks her, If I were to set a bomb that killed your husband and children, your whole world, would you ever stop? And with that, he cracks down on her mental projection bubble so hard that he drops her. And then he grabs Reed. Reed tries to wrap around the Hulk, tries to stop him, keep him from moving to do anything. But the Hulk 
smashes him so hard that he falls unconscious. The Hulk and the Warbound grab Reed and they begin to walk off. And that's when she calls out to the sentry, telling him, We need you. You need to leave your home. We are failing. The Hulk walks through the city, dragging Reed and the others that he has just beat down until Rick Jones runs out in front of him. Hulk! Stop! The Warbound try to stop Rick, but he ignores them, looking at his friend. Cap's dead. For those wondering, this happened right after Civil War, in the death of Captain America. And the Hulk doesn't respond to that news. A lot has happened while you were gone, Hulk. Tony and Reed, they screwed up. I'm sure these guys deserve it. Not like this Hulk. The Hulk reaches out, touching Rick's shoulder, and that's when he acts. The doctor has arrived. He dives into the Hulk's mind, digging around, looking for the emotional side of him. And a bright light beams out of the Hulk's skull as he reaches up, grabbing his head, shouting, Get out of my head! He leaps into the sky, crashing into the bay nearby when he looks up. For everything he sees makes him angrier. Seeing everyone failing, though, there's one man ready to fight the Hulk. And his name is Thunderbolt Ross. Ross thinks back, will they ever learn? This always happens. Happens. The Hulk saves the world, then they pardon him. A few months pass, and he's at it again, fighting against everything around him. He's a monster, and one that needs to be put down. All of those years, everyone telling me he was possessed, or Doc Samson separated Banner and the Hulk, or he just wants to be left alone. Well, it got us nowhere, and we're now standing here with him conquering our world, and no way to stop him. My daughter is dead. Ross loads up into his helicopter, and he takes off, going to fight the Hulk. That's when he opens up with ten tons of adamantium needles spraying into the Hulk's back. The soldiers all run up, and they continue to spray the Hulk over and over, peppering his entire body with damaging needles. He screams out in pain, and that's the moment that Doctor Strange strikes again. He tells Iron Fist that he needed the Hulk to allow him to enter, but this will work fine. Thunderbolt Ross has forced open the door. Inside the Hulk's mind, he hears the voice of Strange, but he ignores it, and he leaps into the air, screaming at Ross. He lands in front of the helicopter, grabbing onto anything that he can. The voice of Strange once again tells him, Come along, Bruce. And the Hulk stops what he's doing as he plummets it back to the Earth with a helicopter in his hands. With a loud explosion, the Hulk snaps to and realizes he's not in the city anymore. He's picturing a new location in his mind, even though he is in fact standing in New York. He looks up to see an astral projection of Doctor Strange. Where have you taken me? This is not the question, Hulk. The question is... Where have you taken me? Hulk reaches up to grab the astral projection, but he gets nothing but air. This is the space within your own mind, Hulk. What is it that you want to show me, Bruce? The Hulk screams out, DON'T CALL ME THAT! Outside of his mind, Ross sees the Hulk yelling at nothing and flailing around. He orders his men to open up in the big green giant. He gets sprayed with more needles over and over as he manages to grab the astral projection finally. Except Strange grows in size, telling the Hulk, Your anger means nothing to me. I am the Sorcerer Supreme and I could snuff the feeble flame of your mortal life with the merest twitch of my finger. He then shrinks back down, but I am also your friend. Let me help you, Bruce. Show me your true face. At that moment, the Hulk thinks back to his life in Sakaar, thinks back to his wife. He softens up, and he begins to shrink down to Bruce Banner, telling Strange. That's what she said. She wanted to see my true face. Her name was Kyra, and I hear her voice all the time. He looks back, and he remembers all of the good times he had with her, the life that he was building. He remembers her telling him the words that he always wanted to hear. This is where you belong, with your people, with your queen, your child. And then, he remembers what took her life. The explosion that rocked the planet. Strange stands over him. Bruce, I... I agreed with Tony and Reed and Black Bolt that you were too dangerous for this planet. I let them trick you into the shuttle and then shoot you into space. But you have to know, we had nothing to do with the explosion or her death. Bruce looks down. Go away. How long have we known each other, Bruce? How many battles have we fought side by side? Look at me and tell me if I'm lying. Bruce rubs the bridge of his nose with his fingers. Ah, <sighs> Steven. And Strange makes himself corporeal, putting his hands on Bruce's back. Bruce reaches out, taking Steven's hand, and Steven tells him, I have you. And a look comes over Bruce's eyes. Yeah, and I've got you. And that's when Strange sees a shadow growing larger and larger, covering him, and he realizes what just happened. And the Hulk crushes Strange's hands, breaking them. Strange falls out of the mental scape onto the floor of his own building, and the Hulk rushes forward, fighting against Ross, still shooting needles at him. He leaps up, landing on a tank, tearing off the cannon on the front side, and then he jumps to another nearby one, stomping its cannon into the ground, throwing it into another tank. He throws the pieces of that 
that tank into the sky, taking out the helicopter. As the pilots all parachute out, he claps his hands, putting down the rest of the ground troops. And then he sees Ross standing there on the side of another helicopter. The Hulk leaps up to him, grabbing him, and they fall out of the helicopter as Ross grabs his pistol, shooting the Hulk in the eye. And the Hulk gets madder as they fall to the ground with a wakoom. After the Hulk and his troops set up Madison Square Garden for their big plan, they walk to Greenwich Village to the home of Doctor Strange. They take down all of the enchantments and outrun Iron Fist and Strange's helpers, except they're all dropped without even any effort. And then the Warbound walk into the house. Strange calls out to Wong, telling him to bring him the box. It's their only hope. They must free Zom. Back in Madison Square Garden, where the Hulk is setting up his throne in the arena for the gladiator fights, Doctor Strange appears before him with his hands and head on fire. He has let the demon Zom in, and he informs the Hulk. Strange, smash! He slams his fist into the ground, nearly taking out Harome the priest. So Harome grabs a blade and swings it to block Doctor Strange as Hulk watches. And then Strange uses his power to smash the weapon and drop Harome. The Hulk leaps in, but Strange plucks him out of the sky and punches him through his stomach, uppercutting him. I've just begun. The people of Earth try to push past the cops protecting them, telling them that they want to see what's happening. They want to see the fights. And as the Hulk lands in front of them, Strange comes up from behind, smashing him in the back. He then uses his spells to bombard the Hulk with everything, followed up by kicking him into a building nearby that crumbles it and forces it to fall on the civilians. Strange realizes what he just did, that he cost innocents their lives. He rushes over to lift the building and he sees the damage, only to see the Hulk holding the civilians safely. Strange looks at him. I so much anger, hard to control. So the Hulk looks at him, tell you what, let me give you a lesson. And he slams Strange into another building. Magic goes off all over as the Hulk pummels Strange over and over until finally he removes Strange from the game board. And that's when the Hulk walks back to Madison Square Garden to end this because it's all about to conclude. Now that he has his arena built, it's time to end this. All of the superheroes have had obedience discs attached to them, which forces them to stand in place in the arena, while the Hulk forces the heroes to listen. My name is Clorinda Roberts. I'm here to speak on behalf of Black Bolt. Last month, my husband retired, and for the first time in 20 years, I got him to go to the opera house with me. You probably saw what happened on the television. Black Bolt's people came and declared war on Earth. They tore my husband's head off. I don't care. My husband is dead, and I want that man to pay. Then another person steps forward. My name is Tom Foster. My uncle was Bill Foster, and you probably knew him as Goliath. He took the rebel side during the superhero civil war because he knew better than to throw in with the government. Tony Stark and Reed Richards cloned Thor. They cloned a god, and they used him to kill my uncle. They talk about laws, but they don't seem to do anything. So I'm ready for the Hulk's law. Then another person steps up. Doctor Strange dances with the devil, and he nearly killed all of us a few moments ago, or did you miss that? Let the judge of God be upon you. The Hulk steps forward. Don't like it, do you? It's not fair. It's not the whole story. You have excuses, explanations. You're innocent. These people don't know what really happened. They don't know what's in your heart. Now you know how it feels. The Hulk then opens up the cage, revealing a giant monster that crawls out snarling and flailing around, ready to kill everyone. The Hulk explains, the day that I traveled to Sakaar, I was thrown into a pit to fight things like this. And as a spiked tentacle comes crashing down near Tony. Reed pushes him out of the way. Strange screams out in pain as it grabs him and crushes him. So Tony runs forward to the sword that he picked up, cutting the tentacle off. And the creature screams out, ready to fight it even harder. So Black Bolt jumps on its head with a spear, stabbing into its brain. It falls dead and the Hulk congratulates them for succeeding. Next, we were thrown into the gladiatorial training school, where we were told to kill each other. So choose your weapons. Reed tells him, never. And Elio calls out, do it, slave! And the shock goes through all four of them. They tried to fight against it, but it was useless. The obedience disc forced them to feel the pain, and Strange turns to Harom the priest. Harom, it is now you who has gone too far. I, Strange, may the prophet forgive and embrace us all. And with that, the superheroes of Earth begin to battle against each other, forced to try and kill each other. With magic weapons and fire burning around them, the rest of the heroes are forced to watch as their friends and loved ones fight against each other. Reed continues to barrel down onto Tony as Tony doesn't fight back. Back. Reed tries to reason with him. Defend yourself! But he's busy hacking into something. The nearby Death's Head guards, and they shoot at the Hulk who sidesteps them easily. So, they force Tony to use those guards to bombard a re 
speed, and as he grows his arm in size, slamming it down next to Tony, the Hulk says, Look at that. We're all monsters. Everyone in the arena begins to chant out, Kill him! Kill him! And a man is watching on the television, a man with the powers of a god. The Sentry. A superhero with the power of one million exploding suns. As he watches on the screen, the Hulk gives the thumbs down to have Reed kill Tony, and that's what he rockets off at top speed. Meanwhile, outside of the arena, Sally the reporter and Ben Ulrich are dealing with the crowds. The people of New York are pushing and shoving each other around. They want to see this action, this fighting, the death, the mutilation. They end up pushing down the fence that is separating them from a sinkhole, pushing Ben Ulrich to the ground. Sally runs to his rescue, having to smash a bottle over a thug's head, but the police stop her, telling her that she can't go. The police explain that it's a sinkhole from all of the damage, and the people are falling into it non-stop. It isn't safe to go that way. But that's when everyone in the crowd looks to the sky, and they thought the destruction was already done, but it's about to get worse, as Sally sees the sentry soaring towards the fight. Back inside, though, Reed brings his mace down right next to Tony's head. Everyone is stunned, and they realize that it was the Hulk who prevented this. Remember this, puny humans. We came here for justice, not murder. No one on your planet has died by our hands, and no one will. For the Earth to remember who you are, we will raise this city to the ground. I will leave you to your shame. Tony looks back at him, beaten and battered and hurt. I explained it time and time again. This is your last chance to surrender, Hulk. Or what? Back outside, Sally just stands there in disbelief that this is happening as she watches the sentry hit the arena so hard that he sprays rubble back, hitting the people and throwing more destruction around. Inside of the arena, the sentry is glowing brightly with the power of a million exploding suns. Hello, old friend. He grabs the Hulk and he slams him through the wall, the buildings, the city itself to get him out of the arena. Sally runs over to the sinkhole where she helps Ben get out of it and they look around because the next few hours are sheer madness. Buildings are falling down over the entire city. There's mad Massive destruction and injuries. Sally looks at Ben. What is this? What is going on? And Ben sees the sentry fighting the Hulk. That can't be good. They begin to try and flee with everyone else, and smoke begins to swirl around them as explosions are following them. Portions of the streets are turning into sinkholes, and fires are burning all around them. New York has been turned into hell. And the Hulk looks back at the sentry. You don't want this fight, sentry. He glares at him. Yes, God, help me, I do. Because you're the only one that I can hit like this. He uses all of his power to and punched the Hulk in the gut, throwing him through more buildings into the sky where he comes crashing down into yet another building. The buildings are like tissue paper to these two, and they're all just being torn down. The Hulk stands up. All right, Stark, Richards, all of you, this is on you. Never forget what happens next is on your heads. The Hulk finally catches the sentry mid-flight by punching him in the face with the full force of the angriest Hulk ever. The explosion is massive, taking out the entire building. Every time the Hulk swings, a mini explosion goes off, and he hits the sentry over and over until blood is drawn, and the sentry points his fist at the Hulk, and he burns him! Fire begins to spout off of the roof of the building, and it begins to pour over the entire city. It fills the streets, it burns the trees, it takes down everything in its path, and Ben, Ulrich, and Sally are left to see the aftermath of it all. The fire burnt for three days after this fight. The city was in ruins, but whose fault was that? Back in the arena, all of the heroes are wondering what this guy is even doing. The Sentry is terrified of his own power. Why is he cutting loose right now? Reed turns to Tony. What did you tell him? And Tony tells him, I told him to play God. Hulk and the Sentry come crashing back down into the arena, and that's when he begins to swirl the power of a million exploding suns around him, and he drops it on the Hulk. But he persists. He accepts it, and he stands. The Hulk stands up. Reed and Tony tell each other that they need to use the satellites to stop him. They need to prevent the Sentry from burning the world around them. And the Hulk tells them, stupid humans, do you think your machines will stop him. And he jumps into the fire, into the source of the destruction. He sees the sentry and he begins to pound away on his power. The sentry asks him, does it always feel this good to cut loose? It's funny, isn't it? After all of these years of me trying to calm you down, it's me who can't seem to stop. The Hulk continues to punch him over and over, draw blood and try to stop him, but he can't. It's too much power for even the sentry. He turns to the Hulk. Goodbye, old friend. And in the power of the sun, the two men continue to punch each other until there's a massive boom. The fire begins to part, and in the middle, everyone sees the Sentry and the Hulk in their human forms. Sentry thanks Bruce, and then he falls, and Bruce turns back to everyone with green glowing in his eyes. Everyone looks at him, and Rick offers his hand. Bruce, welcome home. But it's Meek 
who isn't done. As he shouts, Hulk is not done, come back to us! And he stabs Rick. Bruce falls to his friend's side and his eyes begin to glow and he grows in size. And he smashes the insect. He begins to tear through his warbound, throwing them into each other and smashing them into the ground. The warbound leap on him, trying to hold him back and Meek tells him, I will always be there to remind you because you always forget your purpose, world breaker. You conquered Cigar. You killed the Red King. You should have slaughtered his people, but you let them live. So I watched them load up an old warp core into your shuttle. They thought that it would kill you, but I knew that it would remind you. We all must now die so that you can remember. You are the world breaker. You need to make this end. The anger in the Hulk boils up and something in him snaps. There is suddenly no limit to his power as his anger is too great. I said he was the angriest before, but I was wrong. This is the maddest he's ever been as he begins to grow in size. Reed steps up. Bruce, stop. We'll help you this time. And he slaps his hands together to push the superheroes down. Stop. Without you, none of this would have happened. I'll hate you forever. Almost as much as I hate myself. And that's when they felt it. The Hulk took a step and the entire eastern seaboard felt it. An earthquake across the world from his step. Everything is breaking and crumbling because the Hulk can't even control his power and he shouts, do it before I break the world. So Tony calls down the beam that stops the Hulk. He runs over telling them to shoot at his position and he runs between the Hulk's legs. That's when we see it. Shakroom. The beam hits him full on with everything. And as it burns away at him in that moment, he remembers his happiness and her death. And with his own death, he could finally be with her. I'll never leave you, Hulk. I know. And now, I'll never leave you. Except, that's not how it ends, is it? He can't die, can he? This is the Hulk. And in the smoke and destruction, at the very center of everything, Bruce Banner lays there, staring into the sky. S.H.I.E.L.D. came by and they locked him up, hauling him away. And the Warbound were all arrested. This is the story of the Hulk and how he finally came home. They call you whatever they want, he said. Savior, destroyer. All that matters is what you choose. Bear witness to his choice, children, and give thanks to your gods and pray for their mercy. For tonight, the Hulk may sleep, but his rage will never die. Thank you for sticking it out to the end of our Planet Hulk World War Hulk combo video. I'm sorry that I'm not on screen right now, which I typically am, but we just had a lot going on and this is so much easier to do for an intro and outro. If you want more full stories, let me know in the comments down below. And what do you think about the entire Planet and World War Hulk combo video? What do you think about the whole story as one giant thing? Did you like it? Did you think it went on too long? Did you like how it came together? Overall, let me know in the comments and don't forget you can subscribe right here at Comic Storian to get more full stories every Monday more complete stories throughout the entire week, and more pop culture lore explained by us whenever you have time.